to Reapings and Hallucinations. I'm Hikaru Star, and uh, welcome to Shocking Theater. Imagine, if you dare, scientists. Not just any scientists, but space scientists. The scientists who study space. One day, these space scientists discover that a rogue planet is barreling towards this tiny little rock we're all riding on at a million space miles a space hour. That's what today's feature presentation is all about. The end of the world. It stars Umberto Orsini, Bill Carter, Maya Brent, and Claude Rains was the Invisible Man. I hope you enjoy Battle of the Worlds here on Shocking Theater. Oh, uh, this looks like a gem of a movie. I get presents? There's no presents. I, I, I don't see any presents. Oh, it's an ultra film. So, is this like two, twice as good as a regular film? Claude Rains and the Invisible Man. Yeah, we all. Oh. So, it's a War of the Worlds knockoff then, huh? If this has somebody selling seashells by the seashore, I won't be disappointed. Maya who? Isn't the Durval some kind of rodent? Oh no, who's singing? Who, who's singing? Somebody's singing about some outsider or something. Ah. An observatory in a barren wasteland. You can tell uh, that the English trans where they, they they translated the English titles. I had a dress like that on the de in the desert once. It blinded all who looked at it. Mine was more reflective. Looking for Fred Astaire. I think he's in a different movie. Eve. Eve, I'm over here. Well, isn't Eve Adams' girl not your girlfriend? It's approved. The word came through five minutes ago when I was on duty in the laboratory. What? You got the ligma? And they both drowned. The rest of this movie's just uh, a dream sequence, I guess. You've gone crazy. <laughs> no, if we see nipple, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I apologize. Oh God, yeah, we're seeing nipples. We're seeing his nipples. Oh God, sorry about that. Did not mean to have you guys see those. No. A little while ago, I made a wish on a falling star, as they used to do many years ago. Now, now you're a real boy. When we get away from here, we'll be living among normal people again. <laughs> so you're living amongst Muppets then? I suppose I ought to wish you luck. Uh, she's a very lovely looking Muppet if she's a Muppet. Mrs. Collins, Just saying. Eve and I are going to get married as soon as we put this place behind us. <laughs> oh, no. Dog. It's you night all of a sudden? No, back to day. There is something strange in the air. Don't you feel it? 
And it looks like your uh, day to night filter is broken there, guys. Um, you might want to get that fixed. Are you on the dawn shift too? Yes, for the last time on this dull island. Go ahead and kiss each other. Don't mind me. She likes watching them kiss. Black Widow. She never misses an opportunity to stick her nose in other people's business. Still, that's good advice she gave us. <laughs> yep, and now they're pregnant by the rules of the time period. Okay, if he gets clobbered in the head by one of those things, I will laugh. Bump. Oh, didn't get clobbered. Yes, uh, I can't even watch friends on this thing. Take a look yourself, George, before it gets too light. And this is one where uh, Chandler did that thing. And then Ross did that thing. And that's all I know of friends. Hey Fred. Did you see what I see? Yes. It's nothing. Oh no, it's definitely not nothing. Fred. What do you think it means? I told you, those falling stars are muddling everything. I need some coffee. Skip the coffee, Fred. What can it be? I took some slides. We'll find out in an hour. An hour, my foot will go to the electronic telescope. Precisely. You learn that I'm the kind of man who takes his responsibilities seriously. Morning, Dr. Confield. Yes, that's uh, why you uh, left the baby on, uh, alone back at the house. Look through the you take your responsibilities very seriously, sir. The reading in this area. The whole thing's pretty unlikely. We both saw it. Let me see. Oh my god. Come on. Who, who drew dick and balls on the moon? So frantic. George? I'm afraid he's right. I suppose I was just trying to avoid having last minute complications. So it's seeing dick and balls on the moon. You must help me, Mrs. Collins. Me? Some very strong coffee, please. I'll get some right away. Oh, I thought they were about to, you know, be adults. Right, Fred, let's go to the radio section. I'll bet the other observatories have reported something. Don't forget, Reynolds, that we have the most powerful equipment in the world. What's happening, Reynolds? Something terrible. There, yes. Ah, oh, they canceled Barney and friends again. I was wondering if Barney would ever get, you know, launched out of that cannon. But I guess not. I, I think your data night filter is still broken there. Routine. That's impossible. George, please. The teletypes receive over 1,000 words a minute. Maybe somewhere among the messages that haven't been decoded yet. My dear colleague, unusual messages are signaled by a red light and are given transmission and decoding precedence. Damn it all, Pat. What's that? It's a red light. It's base three on Mars. He's waiting for the Last blue light. Because that means the sail at Kmart. In vain. Base three on Mars. Bob Cole. My former instructor at military school is in command there. What's the matter? Nothing yeah, he seems like the type who'd go to military school, ranging. doesn't he? With a sodium formation. Probably got quite a bit of demerits, though. Is that what interests you? Ah, uh, not take the sodium and make yourself a bicarbonate. Hmm. Huh, <laughs> science insult. Well? Nothing here. The old man must be told. You don't mean to insinuate that I should. You are the dean, Dr. Cornfield. Precisely. But he'd just start to snap at me, and then I'd... I'd lose my temper. We have no authority. It's up to you, Cornfield. Nothing of the kind. Calm yourselves, gentlemen. I'll tell him. If it turns out to be a flash in the pan, I'll be the lightning rod. Plus, he's my That's dentist. My I've already got my bib on. Anyway. Precisely. After all, he was the first one to see it. Will someone please tell me what's going on? I've never been known to snap at anyone. Yeah, you don't seem like... Yeah, the acting talent. 
Now the dog, on the other hand, the dog does seem like the type to snap at people. He's already snapping. So, we're gonna meet this old man yet? I'm gonna tell me the old man's a flower. You call, call, call a flower the old man. This is Venus flytrap. Come forward, Steele. I know all about it. I don't understand what you mean, Professor. I'm talking about the reason that brings you here. Wake up, young fella. I know you're already engaged to that woman. The outsider. I do not approve. It's all written there. Great. I do not want to read your novella again. This is the third draft, dude. This plot goes nowhere. I mean, what happens to Fred the Fish? And why did Fred the Fish even do something like that? Before you can know, I have one advantage over all of you. Calculus. However, I'm glad to see that you at least know how to read it. In spite of the disdain in which I hold all your stupid and dull mechanical apparatuses, you think... That no, that you're really hurting that poor plant. It's probably giving in a lot of pain right now. The difference is that you accept those readings as results. Whereas for me, they are merely elements in a formula. And uh, you forgot I to take off uh, your of bib from your dentist appointment? For the last five days. And I have been curiously awaiting to see when the rest of you... He's pumping up his vape. Um, they had to do that back in the day. Oh, so you didn't see it until just before dawn. And didn't any one of you notice the change of position of the two outer planets? Change of position? Infinitesimal. It merely heralded the arrival of the outsider. No, for an invisible man, I, I, I sure can see you, Mr. Reigns. It simply entered the solar system during the night. None of the other observatories have reported Well, in a different hemisphere, it entered during the day. That's what Dr. Cornfield maintains. Ah, yes. How very interesting. I'm sorry to hear that I have an opinion that is shared. By your doctor, Cornfield. What the devil are you staring at? Get away from me. I can take care of this. Anyway, it's all there. Diameter, dimension, speed, and course of the outsider. Now you keep your trap shut with the others and get out of here. Professor, a foreign body, a planet, the outsider as you call it, has entered the solar system and is heading right for us. Because of its size and particular characteristics, it won't burn up when it contacts the Earth's atmosphere. It yeah. Be a catastrophe. So, I guess the world's gonna end. Time to panic. I'm panicking. Sorry. I, I could panic more, but can't see my face right now through this position. I've already told you to keep your trap shut and get out of here. With pleasure. In fact, I've also come here to say goodbye. No, oh, if only I had a handkerchief, I'd burst into tears. The ones who should have noticed it before you are those idiots on Mars. But since they're all army, they weren't able to, Professor. They are surrounded by a magnetic storm with the formation of sodium. <laughs> now that's not a bad alibi. <laughs> No, oh, just a miniature. The Dalek hive mind is communicating with us. This is Mars Base Three. High Command. This is Mars Base Three. You don't want to know what High happened command, in the first two Mars bases. Base Over. We've lost contact again. Okay, you do. Sandworms and um, Sir, Martian termites. This is Mars Base Three. Those things are nasty. For you, Commander. Plug in the speaker. Hello. Hello. Commander Cole speaking. Hi, Bob. This is Steele. Fred Steele? Where did you spring up from? I have a message for you. 
Fred Steele, like, that Barnett really sounds tomorrow. like a porn star name. Then Eve Barnett and I are going to get married. Congratulations. But you hit me at a bad moment, Fred. I have a convoy coming in, and until just a few seconds ago, my lines of communication were cut off. You'll have to excuse me, Fred. Wait, Bob. There's something else. I'll transmit it in code. Fred! What are you doing? He's, He's disobeying the old man. He could have now he can get punished. Soldier, but he got a sudden passion for astronomy. Astronomy being called Eve Barnett? Exactly. I'll decode the message. Probably some more of his foolishness. Do they answer yet? No, sir. <clears throat> it's a recipe for pistachio pudding. What? Oh, so now you think marriage is a lot of foolishness? Not ours, Kathy. What is it, Boyd? Commander, we've established contact. Um, I think she's probably the only woman on the base. She's probably married to all those guys. Connect me with the convoy escort. Plug in the speaker, Boyd. Yes, sir. Mike Sierra, 1-5. This is Mars, base 3. Over. Mars, base 3. This is Mike Sierra, 1-5. Go ahead. Do you know the causes of your Wow, deviation? all these are like superhero names in this causes movie. Unknown. We have been in free fall navigation for one zero three Earth hours. Deviation became noticeable just nine hours ago. Request permission to operate rocket propulsion motors in order to correct course. There's no other solution. Permission granted. So why is that a bad idea? Besides the fact that they're probably wasting fuel. Mike Sierra, 1-5. This is Juliet, 5. Wilco, out. Gyroscope set maximum. Gyroscope set maximum. So, I think one of those is the Cosmo Strader, but I'm not positive. Engines at 10 gammas. Inversion, 35 degrees. I'm gonna burn my face off. Don't. Nope. Nope. Oh, wow, that hurt my antenna. Oh, that burned my antenna off. Will I be able to get back on course, Commander? This is what I rockets do. Every time board. they you don't know, get near me, Bob, they take one look at me and then they back away slowly. Open the protective dome of the parabolic antennas. Switch on the electronic telescope. The magnetic storm has passed its peak, but there's still an inferno raging outside, sir. Execute the order. This is the space zone to be scanned. Yes, sir. And uh, that's my recipe for um, macaroons. The dome is open. Uh, please put that in the safe. Bum 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 This is Mars Base 3. Juliet 5 copy. Increase rocket power to 12 gammas and correct inversion another one five degrees. I'm gonna fly somewhere in here. We'll go. Engines at 12 gammas. 15 degrees more inversion. Bob, look. He sounds like he's being affected by G forces. But he isn't. The outer is out of orbit. How far out? Six degrees with a Perry Martian displacement of 700 miles. Mike Sierra 15, this is base 3. Julia 5 copied. Demus is out of orbit. It may intersect your course. It's coming towards us. We're falling. The cargo carrier can't make it. Well, time. in space, you kind of are falling. Commander. You're in a free fall constantly. Quick little burst of power, boom. And then, you know, you can shut off and just continue with this free fall through space to the nearest gravitational bell. Fred was right. We must calculate mass, size, and speed in order to determine its field of attraction. Mike Sierra 15. This is base 3. Increase rocket power. Attempt rescue Juliet 5 pilots. Wilco. Engines at maximum. Juliet 5. This is Mike Sierra 15. Prepare to affect self-launching. 
Oh my goodness, self-launching. Oh, what kind of movie are we watching here? Hmm. We have opened our depression chamber. Minus five, four, three, two, one. Go. And now we're all depressed. I mean, I'm constantly depressed, but that's just me. Those little tiny dolls went flying out the thing. Ow! Just banged right into that thing. Tiny little dolls just banged right into your rocket ship. Poor little dolls. They get hurt by the banging up against the rocket ship. Base 3, this is Mike Sierra 15. Rescue operation affected. Request maneuver instructions. Over. This is base 3. Invert another 10 degrees relative to tangent of Deimos. Specify speed of course. Hold tight just a few seconds more. Countermand the order. But commander! Mike Sierra 15, this is base 3. Disregard last order. Execute 35 degree inversion. Speed 16,000 miles. But then we'll head straight for Deimos. Execute! So you can execute the moon of Mars? Um, be careful about the Mars base that's there. Um, they're experiencing some technical difficulties. They opened the portal to hell. I know what I'm doing. Don't you understand, Boyd, that the fields of attraction have undergone an incredible modification? We're falling! We're falling! I mean, the space is constantly falling. Keep rocket power at maximum. Confirm! Lewis! Lewis, answer! Answer me, Lewis! Well, they're dead. Slingshot. There's definitely a fly in here. Might have to go hunting soon. I never thought we'd make it, Lewis. They'll be landing here on Mars in a few minutes. Commander, please excuse me. Don't let it worry you, Boyd. You just lost your bearings for a moment. Lewis, the first pilot on that spaceship, is my son. Dun -dun! Thank you for having brought him back to me. You sure that was a shocking me. twist. We must prepare a report for the High Command and transmit to Earth its death sentence. Mars Base 3, calling Earth. I was the one. I. And Fred. Fred? Dr. Steele. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your boyfriend. You disobeyed my orders. We saved human lives. Are you going to get a medal? We will. Are you sure they're human, the though? They could Mars. be alien shapeshifters. But we didn't do it to win a prize. I mean, I am. Huh? Huh? Worthy. Aren't you aware, you silly girl, that by this peremptory gesture of yours, you created a panic before I could... Before? Before I could... Complete my studies of the outsider. But, Professor... Oh, I know what you're going to say. Something about the salvation of human lives. <laughs> you're a great disappointment to me, Miss Barnett. That yeah, smells I've pretty. I've been here at your side for several years now, Professor. And I've learned, if I may say so, to know you. And I have lived with myself many more years than you, if I may say so. And I know myself better. Why are you so determined to appear pitiless? I have no time to lose in popularity contests. And you don't either. Your young man is waiting for you. Is that Commander Cole's report on the outsider's field of attraction? Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> that bug. Oh, this is interesting. 
Sorry, I'm distracted by a bug. We had a couple warm days and the bug came back alive and now I'm gonna grab this place water here. Just give me a second. Eve. That sucker comes over near me. Eve. I'm gonna get that little bugger. Still writing on his pots. Now it actually looks like night. What's that for? I don't know. Fred, we can't. We can't go. Why? What's happening now is bigger than we are. It's not only happening here. It's happening in New York and Moscow, the tiniest village in Africa. But here. The important thing is to face it together. Or not face it at all. I mean, that's what I'm choosing to do. I'm going to go hide under a rock. You don't deserve. Maybe under the rock will be safe when the planet collides but with Earth. Going. I'll go by myself. Don't fight, dears. Neither one of you is leaving. Oh, she looks so smug about that. I think she's got a crush on Dr. Steele. And you know why they call him Steele? Because he's... <clears throat> um, this is not a lewd channel. So is she evil? I have been reprimanded. Yes, you have been reprimanded. You must try to understand the professor. The news caught them by surprise. Panic has been widespread, and perhaps they think, mistakenly, that uh, if they'd been informed in time. Wonderful. Wonderful. What's your name? Cornfield, I believe. Well, Mr. Cornfield, you are wonderful. You have a facile tongue. Well, for once, I will loosen my tongue. I didn't well, uh, I don't think you have a problem loosening your tongue. You know, it's not difficult to tell the truth, but it's impossible to be believed. You want an example? Read it. It's written here that in spite of all predictions, the outsider will not collide with the Earth. Go on, get out of the way, Gideon. That's the boy. I maintain nothing. I ascertain. I ascertain on the basis of mathematical elements which are irrefutable that the outsider will bypass the Earth at a distance of 95,000 miles without even dreaming of grazing the outside edge of our atmosphere. But it will still get uh, close enough to destroy the or at least uh, affect the planet in a bad way. Your esteemed colleague Newman and the great physicist Ratoff have expressed as their opinion... Mr. Cornfield, there's only one opinion that interests me. And that's my mommy's. Or Gideon's. Gideon's a very thoughtful little boy. Oh, one would say, ladies and gentlemen, that you are disappointed to learn that the end of the world has been postponed. Well, uh, that's uh, good news, I guess. At least I won't have to reschedule my dentist appointment. <laughs> <sighs> Let's just take a brief break before returning to the planet of the lifeless men. Spoiler alert. Here. On Shocking Theater. <laughs>
I did. I I did not do this. Not me. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. They're coming to get me. Oh, they figured out I'm the one who sent the rogue planet. Sight. Ow! That burned my face. Oh, we're in a completely different movie. You know, taking a cheat there might be quicker. Welcome back to Earth, Cole. General Varick, my wife and assistant. We haven't a moment to lose. So where's your assistant? I command immediately. Oh, my oh I get it. Everyone wants to run away. But where? It's impossible to predict on what part of the globe the outsider will fall. Gentlemen. It'll fall on my head. I mean, that's just my luck. We've even gone so far as to announce our official approval of that theory of that charlatan Benson. What is Professor Benson's theory, General? The outsider will bypass the Earth at a distance of 95,000 miles on its course toward the sun. We know damn well it's not true. Of course. However, we have committed ourselves to destroy the outsider beyond the limits of the Earth's atmosphere. I've worked out a detailed development of the automatic plan of strategy which you transmitted to me. Techno babble. Conclusions with ours. What's a techno babble? I I did not understand a thing of that. Our nomination as operational commander has been met with a feeling of universal relief, Cole. But my name's unknown to the public, General. Don't forget that you were the first to discover the outsider. All I did was receive the information communicated to me by Dr. Steele. I decoded the message myself. We know all that. However, the people have faith in you. It's not to our interest to disillusion them. General, today we are facing an adversary just as much to be feared as the outsider. But Fred Steele should be in charge. But the truth is, we cannot afford to split hairs. From now on, we can only rely... Plus, we're the army. We can't afford the truth. But these jokes are just full of political commentary today. Adam! Eve. Adam! Well, uh, I guess you're it's just gonna have to marry it's Mrs. Krabappel. Professor! Mm. Professor! Professor Benson, it stopped just as you predicted. The outsider has started to orbit around the Earth. And it's full of clowns! Oh God, that's terrifying. Professor, it stopped at exactly 95,000 miles, just as you calculated. And it's gone into orbit. And it's full of clowns. Congratulations, Professor Benson. My congratulations. Stand back, you madman. Give me your reports. It's impossible. Why? The first time in my life, I have made an error in calculus. An error that is mathematically impossible. Well, maybe if you wrote on a blackboard and, and instead of a flower pot. The outsider should not have gone into orbit. Benson, is your little error in calculus the only thing you can think of? Yes. Doctor Steve. I have never held you in very high esteem, but I must admit that this time, without knowing it, you have put me on the right track. You're right. For once, I shall not depend on mathematical calculations. Instead, I will, uh... I, 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 I will rely on my tobacco. You know much better than I how to operate these stupid visual screens that permit us 
to talk to the big wigs in politics and the yes I, I know how to use an iPhone I have no intention of speaking to them but you will you will inform them in my name if you like that the outsider must be destroyed and immediately <coughs> missed it was right in front of me but it was like too close to my computer monitor this is the maximum I need like a little sugar water or something. Spectroscopic examination reveals existence of two mineral salts unknown to the solar system. Complete absence of atmosphere. Interior of mass is not compact, possibly made up of gases. Well, at least he's got scientists working for him. External radioactivity soundings register increasingly high percentage. We could make more detailed findings in a reconnaissance flight to the outsider. Benson's again. Oh, okay, Ted. Benson? They all hang on his word these days. He just keeps repeating, destroy it immediately. With the radioactivity I just registered, I'd go slow. If atomic missiles are used, the explosion could cause some pretty serious chain reactions. I think so, too. We must have more data to work on, no matter what the cost. Ooh, that was cool. Professor! We got two moons. I've never seen you before outside your den, as they call it. My dear. Aren't you feeling well, Professor? Uh. Here are the latest readings. Missed. It's like getting too close to my monitor. Mm, still all right. Uh, They'll soon see. Garfield's gone downhill since the 80s. Do you know what is the most tiring thing of all, Eve? That they canceled Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, I get it. When the important thing is to know. Do you love your neighbor, Eve? Well, you are her neighbor. And she seems to like you very much. I'm a scientist, not a defender of the human race. So, they don't want to destroy the outsider. They want to explore it. That'll be funny. Come along with me. Where? Spoiler Where alert, he changes his show? tune. Come on. I don't know the way. Yes, Professor. Oh, you're gonna go in there? What you gonna oh. You're in an ominous war room. Well, I guess who know I know who the king of the island is. Professor, we are honored. That's it precisely. We are honored. Do you mind if I sit down? I've walked long enough. Sit here. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Would you care for a cup of coffee? I'm not here on a social visit. Oh, excuse me. I've come to drink a cup of gall. Oh, uh, so is this where you keep your gall? I mean, usually I just keep it in the fridge. That you made it clear to the high command my complete disapproval of this further waste of time. More than once, I assure you, but the United Commission declared that the disintegration of the outsider would be too risky, so close to the earth. Idiots. Is that where you look? Precisely, Professor. We've just established contact. Watch the TV, Professor. You know what one of those is. You were alive when it was created. The image is clear enough. They seem to have made some progress in this field. This spaceship is equipped for an exhaustive examination of the outsider's internal mass structure. And the research exploration team is composed of the very best scientists in the world. I don't understand why they didn't invite you to the party, Dr. Cornfield. They will approach the planet. He doesn't know if that's an insult or not. I think that's an insult. What did you say? 75 miles. Precisely. A match. Somebody please give me a match. If he doesn't get his smoke in, he'll go insane. Nobody uses matches anymore, dude. We have entered into orbit 
and are circling on a radius of 350 miles. Proceeding with electronic soundings. Over. Execute reduction of orbit and spiral course. Over. That looks like the Martian moon Deimos. Based on what we saw earlier. Executed. Everything in order. Over. Under. Looks like a kid show. <laughs> hey! This is not a kid show. This is a show for adults. That's why I'm not being lewd. If it was for kids, I would totally be lewd. The plates are coming after you. The plates are coming after you. General Varick, why did you leave me grounded? You'll have other opportunities to play the hero. Look. Because uh, if anything went wrong, um, their leader would be gone. But you didn't want to take the mm, home. You've all seen, and I've had my satisfaction. I made no error in calculus. The outsider should not have gone into orbit. Since it did, it's because there was a voluntary modification. You said voluntary modification. Yes. It got its ears pierced. The outsider got its ears pierced. That's what those were. It's earrings. We're in contact with the department bigwigs. The time has come to look them in the eye. Now, leave me alone. The fly just flew in front of my face again. Land on the wall in front of me, or land someplace where I can get you. If I had like a little honey or something, I'd just stick it on the wall and wallop ya. I am Benson. I am Skeletor. It's about time I Are you he man? I want to be listened to then. It depends on what you say. It's very serious. Your days are numbered. Just a moment. Well, honestly, he doesn't look all that healthy. So we, you know, kind of right. Ah, he had an idea. He, he's going to continue writing his novel. I would have done like a clock wipe or something to indicate time passing. To make it look like he's been doing that for a while. But that's just me. I like the clock wipe. God, they all look so evil. They look like they're about to convict him. For treason against the planet Krypton. Gentlemen, you have exactly and then he'll be sentenced to the Phantom Zone. By the government of Krypton. In the meantime, the outsider will be tightening its orbit around the Earth. It will descend to a distance of 45,000 miles from the Earth's surface. And then... What proofs do you have? You'll find them written there. He's a scientist. For granted, you know how to read. The formulas have just been photographed. We will examine your hypothesis most attentively. This is no hypothesis. I tell you that the outsider, in tightening its orbit around the Earth, will provoke serious upsets in the balance of nature's elements, changes of climate, and oreography in vast zones of the globe. You're concerned about the fate of the human race. You're wrong, my dear sir. No, he I isn't. By humanitarian motives. Well then, Professor Benson. I want to know the truth. And if the planet is destroyed, how will I get my Girl Scout cookies this year? I need my Samoas. Of the outsider. 
I'll make you a deal. Then send you explain yourself back. Find yourself to the heart of the matter. Got it. Please tell us, Professor Betts. Got that I little determined. The deep within the outside of the I wanna swear, but I'm not gonna who come from another galaxy. Fugitives, perhaps. From but that little world. mother then according mm. to it's now on the fly sweater and won't be bugging me anymore tonight. I can tell you that much, little bugger. Wouldn't they be more attracted to the sun's life-giving warmth? Very well, then. I present you with the possibility of saving the human race. That is, to put it bluntly, I will save... Your lives for you. Yours. And yours. And yours. Y yes, Colonel Sanders, we will save your life. Because if we don't save your life, how are we going to get the fried chicken? Necessary means for studying and, and I need my fried chicken fix. Secret. What means, Professor Benson? And what secret? Oh, it, it's Gary, secret stash of Samoa's. Got it. Yeah, they don't like that idea. That's, those seem like odd places to put televisions for communication purposes. I mean, I wouldn't put a screen... I, I, I'd put them, like, all in, like, a little row on, on the same plane. So it's like I can just kind of look at them. But not, like... Up there, and down there, and over there, and over there. I and one right up on the ceiling, and one right up on the floor. And why is that one in the toilet? Okay, Riff Raff. I am instructed to communicate to you our most profound admiration and gratitude, Professor Benz. The Executive Office has proposed you for the highest academic award. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. As for your request, the United Commission finds it necessary to turn it down. That doesn't surprise me. Could you uh, pick up the pace a little bit? Some of us are nodding off. I thought this was a movie. I thought it was a movie, not war. Now nah, I may be wrong. In substance, the operational plan. Ah, Fred Jones is there. Hey! So shaggy. Oh, wait, that's his wife. Not shaggy. There are three regular strategic alternatives and one for emergency. You know, he's important. He's got an ascot. Our military engineers, guided by Commander Robert Cole, who will take personal part in the operation. That's a good enough guarantee for anyone. We're depending on you, Mr. Barrington, as chief of the Psychological Bureau, to unleash every propaganda means at your disposal to tranquilize public opinion. You can count on it, General. Don't worry, I'll engineer uh, a Kardashian uh, controversy uh, any second now. And there's a couple of YouTubers standing by to uh, get into trouble. We'll distract the entire world from the evil that we're doing. Bob, don't you think Varric is oversimplifying? That's one way to gather courage. He's not Varric. He's too tall, and he probably does not have hair on his chest. Which determined the affinity between our individual Oh, that's a Dragon characters. Age reference, kids, if you, if you didn't get it. Kathy? Now I bless that psychotechnical exam. I love you, Bob. I'd like to have a house of our own and babies. I don't remember that from the... You want a house made of babies? What? 
but I'm happy. Oh, wait, house Even and like babies. Okay. As long as you never leave me. Take me with you, Bob. Up there? She's already... You've already Canada been up there, lady. Kind of dull. I want to be included in one of those buttons. There's a, there's a lot more green down there. here. Well, not right now. It's... A, it's uh, look out there. The ninth wave. It, it, it's kind of gray right now and um, nasty looking. Don't forget Benson. What's Benson got to do with it? Remember his prediction. What's Benson got to do? Got to do with it? What's Benson but a second-hand emotion? Do I have to climb down, or can I listen to you from up here? I know the plan of attack. First, the telecontrolled missiles will be launched as a diversion tactic. You know, you can take your x-ray vest off. Provoking what the military experts refer to as the moment of neutralization. Only then will the spaceships attack the disks and destroy them. That technique's as old as the hills, supposed to be clever tactics. Hmm? Why are you telling me all this stupid nonsense? The because I need to talk to somebody school, about it. Who was the instructor of my class at school? Ha! Huh. Fine class that must have been, judging by the results. He has asked me to take part in the expedition. Young fella, this is a dangerous mission. Or as they say in such cases, a hopeless one. I know, but I need your permission. I'm still part of the scientific complement here. I don't like the smell of this story. Why? Because it's inspired by non-scientific motives. Explain yourself, Professor. What the devil? Gideon looks so fierce. <laughs> Eve, I want to present to you a hero. He wants to go to war. All because of you. Because of me? Miss Barnett and I no longer have anything in common. It was all a big mistake. Fred! I've been made aware that Miss Barnett is completely indifferent, as far as I am concerned. And fortunately, I've discovered that I have... The he is finding great... Yes, I understand that, sir. I'm also finding great joy in this. Silly little performance this is. Right out of a 19th century melodrama. Or a 20th century B-movie. Oh, wait. I be going out of my way to look for trouble, as you seem to be intimating. Nonsense. Human feelings are inconsistent. In fact, they're the only inconsistent elements in all nature. Be quiet, Gideon. I didn't ask for your opinion. But I'm an inconsistent uh, element, too. I'm a dog. All right, Steel. Can't protect me. Go I'm a wild man. Chum, and have yourselves a nice class reunion. I've just had an idea. Naturally, it's a great one. Naturally. I'm going to go to sleep. Going to sleep is, usually is a, a great idea. I mean, I think I went, I think this movie's putting me to sleep. High command, this is Alpha Two Three. Three disc formation sighted. Well, that's one dead rocket. That's another dead rocket. That's enough. Cut off the telecommand. Are you crazy? Cut off the telecommand, I say. We must maneuver freely. That would be an act of insubordination. Yeah. Gamble your career, you idiot, if you don't want to gamble your life. Alpha 23 has cut off the telecommand. Hit one of them, Bob. Not with the ray. Run into him. Don't look at me like that. I'm not insane. Are you sure? You have been working with Dr. Benson for quite a while now. Yes, that's not nice, uh, striking confidence for your sanity, sir. It's Fred Steele's spaceship, Professor. Fred Steele? Wait Sounds like a 1940s detective. Before you put me on the rack. You must pass as close to him as possible, almost grazing him. If 
high speed, they'll burn up when they hit the atmosphere. At least Cole and his men will end up in glory. Including Fred Steele, Private Eye. Now I'm getting dizzy. No flirting in the spaceship. Per your orders. Contact the high command immediately. Tell them in my name to call back all surviving spaceships. The fallen disc must be recovered at all costs. As for you, my girl, you get hold of that sometime suitor of yours. If he's still alive, I want his report on the fallen disc. And if the bigwigs don't want to listen to me this time either, you can tell them in my name to all go to hell. My goodness, it's such a serious one. You know, they'll be heading there anyways. <laughs> I mean, they are politicians. Yeah, that was an easy joke, but sometimes you just have to pick the low-hanging fruit, don't you? Time for uh, another brief break. And then, the stunning conclusion of Battle of the Worlds! Here. Unshocking Theater. Slowing down? That means it's not going to get a ticket. That's a good thing. Soon this alien technology will all be mine! <laughs> oh, sorry about that. So, is the atmosphere breathable in there? And now they're entering the frisbee. Ew, it looks like the inside of a rib cage. I think you're in the thing, it's the lungs. Ugh, and the walls all slimy. Yeah. Hello! Encyclopedia Britannica! We've got a good deal on encyclopedias! Oh, and I have a Kirby vacuum, so if you, if you need to clean this place up a little bit. Interested in a Kirby vacuum? Yeah, they're hiding from you! You're pretending to be salesmen! It's perfect for my plants. 
They love seeing it. Oh. Experimental new age music. Definitely not my cup of tea. Oh. I mean, prog rock is fine, but this, woof. That's not it, Cornfield. I detest your stupid gadgets, but at least I know that you should raise the frequency and reduce the wavelength. That's as far as it can go, Professor. Hmm, you mean as far as you can go. He has no respect for Cornfield. Ah. Neither do I. Radioactivity rising. The outsider is closing in. Ooh, that's pretty. That's not. Well, world's doomed. I guess I can cancel my dentist appointment after all. That's good. Really was not looking forward to that. I mean, Halloween just ended. I'm still going through the Halloween candy. Dennis would not be happy with that. I mean, look at him. That's what the dentist is going to do to me. He's going to make me wear that dental apron all the time. And I do not look good in dental aprons. I look positively hideous in dental aprons. You know, it would be nice to maybe see some people panicking or something. The, the, the effects on people. Yeah, there's no people there. Math! Disasters! More disasters! More math! Dog! Science! Dog! A nice relaxing shower. There are only two hundred and sixteen hours left. Benson must be reminded of his own prophecy. The key to the cipher may be discovered any moment now, or maybe never. It's a terrible, drawn out agony for the whole world. The abrupt end that everyone expected would have been better. Most things happen unexpectedly, even the apocalypse. Well, that is true. Uh, you, you know, when the world ends, uh, you know, we're not going to see it coming. It's just going to happen, and, like, all all people are going to be surprised, but, like, that one one person out in the wilderness, middle of nowhere, doesn't talk to people at all. He'll be like, yep, yep, that that's it, yep. Kind of figured it happened on this day, but, um, yeah. I hate people. Or the desire. The man's a pig. You should ditch him. Love. Please forgive me. <laughs> Quite the contrary. I'm grateful to you, Kathy. I'm afraid he... Not of suffering myself, but... I'm afraid for him, my husband. Coming? Ah. I'm very glad to meet you, Commander. I've heard quite a lot about you from Dr. Steele. Um, is he sick or something? He's being Your awfully wife? polite. Yes. Delighted. Any kids? No. But we will have someday. Good for you. Take a chair. Um, who put what in his coffee? I think the moment has come for you to offer some of your delicious coffee. Yeah, he's definitely gone insane. Uh, Mrs. Collins is so good. Psychic, you know. And uh, these are my kids. My collaborators, I should say. And this is uh, Dr. Cornfield. Yes, the eldest. Oh, uh oh, time to get him to the hospital. Have a cigar. Hmm? I don't mind if I do. A 
Okay, that was good. That was a good little bit right there. Ah, Gibson, what about some music? Professor, I'm very grateful to you for your courtesy, but you don't like music? Not very much. Oh, but Commander, music is language. The language of the bodies in space. Have you never heard of Pythagoras? The harmony of the spheres? The language of numbers? Oh, but of course... There he is. He's back to normal. He was just having an episode. I have found, you understand, a richer language than your rude, imperfect spoken tongue. An order which sound will give from afar will make you call the most listened to commander in the history of the human race. Because we have deciphered for you the language of the outsider. And you will speak to the discs up there. You will give the order. And they will destroy themselves. And your weapons will be like these. This and that and that. Oscillators. Precisely. The highest of frequencies. Wavelength six millimeters. Cornfield! You're wonderful, Gibson. Rennes. Oh, wow. He's actually impressed by Cornfield for once. Cornflakes, you're doing good. Ah, oh, still not my taste. Music nowadays. I mean, okay. It does have a beat. And you can dance to it, but... You know, this is like... A one-hit wonder. This is not gonna... This is not gonna be loud and lasting music. I, I'm, I'm just saying, Benson. Maybe to get uh, Dr. Honeydew to look at it. He'd figure it out with Bunsen. Doctor, or sorry, not Bunsen, with Beaker. He's Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. I don't know where my brain went today. Probably in a rocket ship up to the Outsider. Ack, ack! Uh, I'm going to communicate with him. Ack, ack! Ack, ack. Oh, wrong clips. Ack, ack. Ack. Okay, stop that. Ack, ack. Okay, good. Destruction. Now it's our turn. Cornfield, Reynolds, Gibson, Moran, music. Okay, so Cornflakes and Moran are providing the music for this one. Okay, my ear is going nuts. Can the scene be over? When I watched it earlier, I watched it on two times speed, so it wasn't this bad. Oh, my head's gonna blow open soon. You know, this movie was a lot bearable on two times speed, just saying. A lot more bearable. Kind of a slow burn. Oh, you almost can't see the strings on that one. Almost. No, not yet. Professor Benson, the military operation for destroying the outsider is ready to go into effect immediately. But I want to discover the whole truth. It's passing close by to us. I cannot agree to let you destroy it out of cowardice. Professor, there are only 72 hours left in the time limit you yourself set. But you cannot destroy it on me, now that I'm so close. Professor, you act as if it were your personal property. Science is nobody's personal property. Very well, then. You deserve what's coming to you. What do you mean? You have studied the planet's surface, but you have not torn open its bowels. Which spewed forth the Ew. I destroyed. You know, I don't tear open its bowels. That's disgusting. Oh my goodness. The mess that's going to make. I, I, Dr. Benson, I am not cleaning it up if you tear open its bowels. 
I am not cleaning up the mess. I refuse to. No, 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 no. You monster, you. Harumph. Gentlemen. I will give you a guarantee. For the first time, the first time in my scientific life, I will come out of my den prepared to pay with my person. So, he's going to go get the newspaper himself then. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the USS Grumpy Man. It's continuing mission. To be grumpy on an alien world. To grump at new life and new civilizations. To go where no grump has gone before. Except for Dr. McCoy. Do 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 Sorry. So is somebody gonna say something? Professor how do you feel? Like I let out the best fart of my life. He's as giddy as a schoolgirl. Giddy as a schoolgirl uh, seeing her crush. Got him asking her to prom. Ah. That would be nice. Uh, I parked my car right over that way. The signal. I'm being guided by the signal. Follow me. So, um, they're Power Rangers? Or is there an imposter amongst them? I mean, colorful spacesuits and all. Which one of them is going to die first and who's going to kill them? We better watch out. Watch for anybody venting. I think that's the right term. I've never played the game, actually. I've only watched it being played. It looks fun. Honestly, the game looks fun in VR. It's like one of those few th reasons why I, I would want some VR. I just don't know if it would make me sick or not. It made me sick back in the 90s. I really was like dizzy and wanting to throw up after I tried it back in the 90s. But it's been proved since then, so maybe it'll be fine. Ew, the floor is sticky. Work. So, can you pick up the pace a little bit, movie? This next 11 minutes is going to feel like forever. Ew, the walls are slimy.
you. So it looks like somebody raided the Spirit Halloween. Well, you're gonna need to do an autopsy. Uh, inside the giant spider on the ceiling? Don't go near it. My experience, giant spiders are totally not worth it. It'll jump on your face and bite you, and you'll be screaming in agony, and it'll leave a nasty mark that's going to take forever to disappear. What? I've had experience with spiders. Or you could get off the ship and maybe save the planet. Well, nobody's dead yet. But one of them is definitely an imposter. Chief McLeod. Yes, I watch MST3K. What of it? Well, everybody's uh, split up. Um, somebody's going to start dying. One by one, they're going to be picked off by Benson. Because the secret is... He is, a, he is, he is an ex-murderer on an alien world. You know, getting off that rock might be a good idea. They're going to blow it up. In case you forgot. Oh, this is trippy. Oh. Oh, I think the stuff I took to make this movie more tolerable is beginning to kick in. Ooh. I've always wondered what red tasted like, and now I know. It tastes like mango. I'm saying I can taste the colors. The electronic brain is here. Um, I'm not electronic, Mister. Mister Benson, I'm I'm not electronic. Well, kind of am. <laughs> oh, that was a funny joke wanting to live. Watch out, Eve. The other 
I don't think I I don't think the planet likes his laugh. They're causing a planet quake. This is what they did with their budget. This is this is the entirety of their budget on screen right here. Yes. Their budget was a pack of chewing gum. Why do you ask? Stop the plan. Unthinkable. Take off, I tell you. The plan's about to go into action. Cowards. We're cowards. Shouldn't have left them there alone. Especially me. They, we left you behind too? Oh my goodness. We're going to have to search for you, sir. What's your name again? Voice Commander Cole. In the name of God, Commander, answer me. We're going around in a circle. Let's get out of here. Right in the cave. We've it. You shouldn't have said anything. They're like, oh boy, time to get up. Finally. Why are they getting bored? Let's get back in the spacesuits and go have fun. Within 50 seconds, the plan will go into action. I cannot stop it. You're committing suicide. You can stop it. You're the one in charge. The rescue squad is about to pick up the missing party. Just a few more seconds, General. Well, it's time for me and my magnificently dyed hair to, uh... Press the button. Launch missile, special warheads. That's an order. Oh, he can't even press the button himself. That's how I feel every time I'm making popcorn. I'm watching that timer go down. And then, boom! Popcorn! You know what that looks like? I'll leave the rest of your imagination. To me, it looks like a rocket ship. So you're just leaving then. You're not even gonna stick around for dessert? Hold on, dear. Some dinner guests. You can't die. You can't die. Kathy. Kathy. Now she's gonna go act at, at at the great shopping center in the sky. Yes, I'm making fun of the sound effects. Never know what. The taste of fried chicken? I know the taste of fried chicken. I haven't had Indian food yet, but... Poor Benson. If they opened up his chest, they'd find a formula. Where 
his heart should have been. Now that's not a very nice to, thing to say about the man. He saved everybody's lives. Oh no. Oh no, poor doggy. Poor Gideon, what's gonna happen to him? What, what, what's gonna happen to poor Gideon? I mean, it's obvious that his dad isn't gonna be coming back from 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 space. Will Gideon be okay? Will he? Will he be okay? I mean, maybe maybe Mrs. Um, Mrs. Collins could adopt him or something. I mean, somebody's got to take care of that poor little boy. Who's going to take care of the poor little boy? Poor Gideon. Excuse me. Poor Gideon. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the movie. I know I sure didn't. It was beginning to put me to sleep there. Very much a slow burn of a movie. As for trivia, there really isn't anything really cool to talk about. Basically, the previous movie that these people released wasn't a hit. They needed a movie with a name. And, well, this one had Claude Rains, who was, as the song goes, the Invisible Man. But... Well, it never got released in America by a big distributor. The movie was released in other territories in 1961, but didn't get released until 1963 in the U.S. And it had a really small one. Honestly, if it hadn't been for home video and uh, horror hosts like yours truly, this movie may have been forgotten about entirely. Next week... I'll be showing something a lot worse, unfortunately. It's going to be from 1959, and it's called... Teenage Zombies. Yeah, not a good one. Until then, take scare, good fright, and pleasant screams.